I've been collecting photographs, videos, and other data for years and years and years. And this is the kind of problem you end up having. These are not reliable. If I store data on one of these and I drop it, or the hard drive fails, all my data is gone. That's a major, major problem. You don't want to lose your data. So what I did a few years ago, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the pros and cons about NAS devices. If you just want to skip to the setup of this NAS, jump to this timestamp, and I'll show you the unboxing and setup of this NAS. I've been collecting photographs, videos, and other data for years and years and years, and this is the kind of problem you end up having. You probably have something similar where you're trying to store your photographs or your data on hard drives such as these. Small hard drives run out of capacity very quickly, but they're great for being portable. I've got lots of these kinds of hard drives, and then I've got bigger hard drives. But the problem is, these are not reliable. If I store data on one of these and I drop it, or the hard drive fails, all my data is gone. That's a major, major problem. My wife will kill me, my kids will kill me if I lose their photographs, as an example. Data such as photographs and videos are so important, you don't wanna lose your data. So what I did a few years ago is I bought a Synology NAS or Network Attached Storage. This is a DS418. There are multiple advantages of using a Network Attached Storage rather than a hard drive such as this. One thing you can use is RAID. If one of the hard drives fails, data is not lost. You can replace one of the hard drives with a new one and the data will be built back again. Be careful with some of the versions of RAID. Some of them don't replicate data from one hard drive to another. So if the hard drive goes, your data is gone. Now my favorite network attached storage device or NAS is a Synology. Again, I've been using these for years. I've got two of these, but I have this continuous problem that I run out of storage. So I was really happy when Synology reached out and said they would sponsor a video. But let me say, I'm not getting any payment for this video. What they have done, however, is give me two of these NAS devices. This is a DS1821. Synology have given me the NAS. They've also given me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 16 terabyte hard drives. This gives me a lot more storage. In other words, hopefully I'll have enough storage space for a while. But what they've actually done is give me two of these devices because what I wanna show you in this series of videos is HA or high availability between two of these NASs. Let me know in the comments below the kinds of things that you'd like me to cover. These are Synology hard drives, 16 terabyte hard drives. So in this first video, rather than showing you the crazy stuff, what I've got here is a small Synology NAS, which they've also given me a DS220 plus. So we've got our quick installation guide. We've got the little Synology NAS in here. And there you go. They have given us some cables. The important piece is the Synology NAS. This one only has two drives in it. I have to push to release the hard drive bays. So I can take those out and then I can put new hard drives in here. Very simple to install really. Synology have given me two Toshiba hard drives for this NAS. These are six terabyte hard drives. Now to install it, you simply unclip these two clips on the end, very simple and then you insert it into the drive bay, obviously with this pointing to the back of the NAS. So here's the front and then the back, and then just clip these back. There you go, clips in. So the hard drive is now secured, and then I can put it back into the NAS like this, and it clips back in. So do the same thing with the second hard drive. Once again, you've just got these little clips that you can release and then make sure that you put your hard drive in the right way. And then you can just clip these back, put this in the right way, and there you go. My two hard drives are now installed and I can put this back again on the NAS. Now, some people may have worried about how difficult it is to install the NAS. As you can see, it's very, very simple. In the past and on some models, you had to screw the hard drives in, but you don't have to do that anymore. This one also comes with two ethernet ports. 
we've got a USB and we've got our power. So power adapters here. They've sent me a US power adapter, so I won't be able to use that because I'm in the UK. So I'll use a UK power supply or kettle lead. I'll connect to the NAS and then power it on. So simply put the power in and then you can use the supplied ethernet cables or you can use another ethernet cable to connect the NAS to your network. What I'll do is use my own ethernet cable and connect that to the NAS on the first ethernet port and then I'll power this up and continue the demonstration. Now just for transparency, Synology are not paying me to create this video. They are not reviewing this video before it goes live. They've told me I can say what I want to, but I can tell you that I've used Synology devices for a long time and have been really happy with them. And these are my recommended NAS devices. Okay, so I'll connect the Synology to my network using the first ethernet port. I'll plug it in. That's now connected to a power supply and I'll power it on in Windows. I'll open up a browser and I'll go to a website called find.synology.com. That'll allow me to discover NASs on my local network. And there you go, my NAS has been discovered. I can see information about the NAS as an example. I can see its IP address that was provided via DHCP. So I've got a dynamic host configuration protocol server, basically my home router that's allocating IP addresses and the NAS was given an IP address in my local subnet. I can see the MAC address. I can see information such as the model, which is DS220+. plus. This model has two CPUs and two one gig RJ45 ports, which I've shown you already. It supports RAID 1 as an example, where we replicate data from one hard drive to another. You could use RAID 0, which gives you more hard disk space. But if one of your hard drives fail, you'll lose all your data. So I'd recommend using RAID 1 rather than RAID 0 because not a problem if you lose one of your hard drives. You really want that kind of redundancy when using a device such as this. Okay, so I'll click connect. You have to agree to the end user license agreement. So make sure that you read that and then click I have read it and agree to the terms. Synology have a privacy statement that you need to read and then you can click continue. Now, one of the great things about using a NAS locally rather than a cloud provider such as Google or Dropbox or one of those other cloud providers is the data is yours. It's stored locally on your own server. It's not in the cloud where cloud providers could charge you more money or they could index your data or sell your data, sell information about you. I personally prefer this. I do use Dropbox for work. And that's another great thing about the Synology NAS is you can replicate data from the NAS to the cloud and back again. So as an example, I can have the data on my NAS, but also in the cloud, my internet connection isn't great here. So it's much quicker to get the data off the NAS than in the cloud but I can use Dropbox as an example to share files with other people. You could remotely connect to the NAS as well if you wanted to. I can allow other people to get access to files stored on my NAS if I want to rather than using Dropbox as an example. Okay, so I'll click Setup and then I'll click Install Now to install the Disk Station Manager. Now, you are warned that all data will be removed on your hard drives. Now, these are brand new drives, so that's the whole point. I wanna initialize these drives and get them ready to store data on them. Just be aware, if you used a drive that has data on, you're gonna lose all that data, but that's okay for this example. So I understand that all data on these hard drives will be removed. I'm okay with that, and I'm gonna click okay. And now the disk station is initialized. Okay, so after a while, once the software is installed, we have a welcome screen. So we told welcome to DSM 7.0. I'm gonna click start. I need to give this a device name. You can obviously use your own information here. I'll just call this a DS220 underscore one because that's the first device of this kind that I have. Administrator name, I'll just use David. So I'll specify my password and click next. Now we asked, do we wanna automatically install important DSM and packages updates only recommended? Or do we want to install DSM and package updates? Or do we want to install everything or notify me when updates are available? I'm going to install the important software. Now you can create a Synology account to receive more benefits. If you've already got an account, 
you can click sign in now or you can create an account. This, for example, gives you access to your NAS from anywhere. So if you want to access your NAS when you're traveling, as an example, via the internet, you could set up an account. You can also do around the clock monitoring and protection. So I'll create a new account. I need to specify my email address. So check your email for the code. I'll enter my code and click next. I'll specify my username. I'll specify my user type. And then I need to specify a password and I'll click next. I'm gonna to agree to the terms of service and click I have read and agreed to the data handling policy described. Click submit and then I can sign in. I need to specify my Quick Connect ID. So I'll specify that and click Submit. That will allow me to access the NAS from anywhere. I'll copy that information and save it. And then click OK. Now there's a whole bunch of software available with Synology. You have, for example, around the clock monitoring and protection and configuration backup if you wanna backup your configuration. I'm not gonna enable those, I'm just gonna click Submit. And there you go, I've logged into my Synology NAS. I now need to create a storage pool and volume, so I'm gonna click Create Now. Basically, we have these hard drives that are part of a storage pool and we have to put them into a volume so that we can use them. So I'm gonna click Start. Okay, so we told that we need to configure our storage pool. RAID, we told, is a data storage virtualization technology that allows us to aggregate multiple drives into a storage pool. There are different types of RAID. The one that they're recommending is SHR, Synology's RAID. If you're not sure what the device supports, Synology gives you information about the different types of RAID, and you can see the requirements and additional functions of that. So that opens up another tab, and you can see that as an example, this would be used with one drive. RAID 0 features striping. This does not provide any data redundancy and then adds the size of all the hard drives together. So as an example, if I go back to my setup wizard and click RAID 0, we told that we need at least two drives. Fault tolerance is 0. So it combines those drives together to give us an increase in performance, but provides no fault tolerance. If I choose RAID 1, we need a minimum of two drives. This is most often implemented with two drives. Basically, the data is mirrored from one hard drive to another. So if you lose one of the drives, it's not a problem. That's the type that I prefer. So if I select two hard drives in this tool, it'll give me information about the data that I have. So this is available disk space. I've got two 16 terabyte hard drives in my NAS, but that only gives me 16 terabytes of data because one is used for protection. If I chose RAID 0 as an example, I would get to the full 32 terabytes, but no redundancy. So I would typically choose RAID 1 because that's what I'm used to using. So I'm going to select that and click Next. I need at least two drives, so I'm going to select my two drives Notice these are six terabyte hard drives. I will do lose some disk space. So I'm only gonna get 5.5 terabytes. Click Next. Now we're told that these drives are not on the compatibility list. So if I click on the compatibility list, I'll see the drives that Synology recommend. And you can see there's a whole range of hard drives. You typically want hard drives that are built for this kind of application, not just standard drives. Now these Toshiba drives are drives that Synology gave me. So I'm gonna assume that they're good but in your deployment, you may want to use a drive on their list. So as an example, these Seagate Iron Wolf drives are really popular. You may want to use one of these, which is optimized for data storage applications such as this, or you may want to use a Synology drive such as this one. We can now perform a drive check to make sure that everything's okay. Default is to skip that, so I'm going to skip that. I'll give the volume a name, my data volume. I need to specify the maximum size of volume, so I'll do that and I'll click Next. I'm gonna use the recommended file system. Good idea often to use recommendations, so I'll click Next and I'll click Apply. And I'm warned once again that the data will be erased. I'm okay with that. Yes, I am, because that's what I wanna do. So I'll click OK. And now the drives are spinning up. They're getting made ready so that I have my volume. Okay, so there you go. I've got storage pool one. It's healthy, 5.5 terabytes. 
I've got my two hard drives. You've got these little widgets that you can move around. So I can see as an example that the system is healthy. I can see resource information. I'll click plus here. One of the ones that you probably wanna add is storage. I'll make this a bit bigger. What that'll allow me to see is my storage, system health and resource monitor. Now you can go through the quick tour if you want to. I'm not gonna do that here. What I wanna show you is that by going through those simple steps, I've been able to set up my Synology NAS and I can now add data to the NAS. Now in File Explorer, if I go to network, I can see my Synology NAS. And if I double click on that, you can see that it's opened up a connection to the IP address and port number of my NAS. And I could continue to that IP address and then I could log into my NAS. What I can also do is connect via File Explorer to the NAS. So double click on this computer that's available. I'll log in. And in this case, I'll remember my credentials. But notice at the moment, the folder is empty. I can't copy files from Windows to the NAS at the moment. So back in my NAS, I'm gonna go to File Station. We're told that no shared folders are available. I'm gonna click OK because I wanna create shared folders. So I'm gonna call this David's data, my data. I don't wanna hide this in my network places. I wanna restrict access to administrators only. I don't want anyone to have access to this. I'm gonna click next. I'm not gonna encrypt the data. You could encrypt the data if you wanted to. I'm gonna click next, click next, and click next. So what I wanna do is give David read-write access. I'm not gonna give guests access, and I'm gonna click OK. So back in Windows Explorer, what I'll do is refresh this and notice David's data is a folder that's available. So back on my Synology, double click on File Station. We can see that we've got a recycle folder there in Windows. We can see the recycle folder. What I'll do is make this a bit smaller, go to my downloads directory, and I'll copy a file, let's say this Chrome setup file, go to David's data and click paste. And what you'll notice is in Synology, if I refresh that, that file has been copied. So I can now copy files from Windows onto my Synology NAS. So basically in Windows, I can go to my network and I'll see my NAS and I'll be able to connect to it and then copy files to my NAS. So as an example, I'll open up another file explorer window, go to downloads. There's a bunch of stuff that I've got here. Let's say I'll, I'll copy my Windows 11 ISO file and I'll paste that onto my Synology NAS. That's a big file. It's gonna take a while to copy, but going back to my Synology NAS, if I click refresh, you can see the file is already showing. Basically what I've shown you now is how to get a Synology NAS up and running. Very basic setup. A lot of options are available on the NAS. I can see my widgets once again, showing me the disk space, showing me the health of the Synology NAS showing me the resource monitor. There are many, many applications that you can install. Under control panel, you can, for instance, set up your users if you want to. You can set up external access to the NAS. So specify the quick connect ID. You can go to the package center. You need to agree to the terms. And now here you can install a whole bunch of applications. One of the ones that I like is CloudSync. That allows me to sync my data to a cloud provider such as Google or Dropbox. I use Dropbox, so that allows me to sync to Dropbox. But there are many applications available here. As an example, you could run Docker on your Synology NAS. You could run Python on the NAS, set up a WordPress server. A lot of people use this to stream uh, videos. So have videos on their NAS and then stream that locally. A lot of applications available. I'll cover some of the applications in a separate video. Okay, this video is getting long, but that was kind of like a quick start to a Synology NAS. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and clicking on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bombal, and I want to wish you all the very best.